In late 2006, American author and tarantula breeder Michael Jacoby joined British tarantula researcher and historian Andrew Smith and Andrew's longtime field trip partner Paul Carpenter and Paul's brother Mark to mount a two-week study of the theraphosid spiders of Costa Rica. Over the course of two weeks, the four-man team traveled throughout the Central American paradise to visit historical tarantula collecting sites, especially those of Costa Rican arachnologist Carlos Valerio, who described many Costa Rican tarantula species only 25 years earlier. The team found about a dozen different tarantulas, including those most associated with Costa Rica. The beautiful orange and black Megaphobema mesomalis, the horned Sferabothria hoffmani, and the curly-haired Brachypelma albopelosum. In Search of Costa Rican Tarantulas takes you along on a successful tarantula research field trip, where you will also encounter scorpions, reptiles, birds, and monkeys. You will learn about the spiders themselves from Andrew's field comments and Michael's narration. You will discover the wonders of exploring exotic locales for big, hairy spiders. Hi, this is Michael Jacoby. The trailer you just watched was to promote my two-part documentary on the 2006 field trip to Costa Rica as part of Andrew Smith's team that included his longtime traveling companion Paul Carpenter and Paul's brother Mark. It was the first time I traveled with Andrew, who I had first met years earlier when he was the guest of honor for two successive conferences of the American Tarantula Society. We became quick friends, and it was an honor to be invited to fly solo from America to meet up with these three English gentlemen. Over the course of three weeks, we found 14 different tarantula spiders as we traveled what would become my favorite country, working out of the forest base camps that you see here. When I created the 2012 film you are about to see, it was sold on Andrew's LoveTarantulas.com. That is why I made a short teaser to promote it, and at the time did not offer the two-part series publicly on my own YouTube channel. Now, eight years later, I have decided to combine the trailer with the entire documentary into one free release. I hope you enjoy this almost 15-year-old footage of a tarantula research team in the field. In 1980 and 1982, Carlos Valerio published several papers on Costa Rica's theraphosid spiders, describing a total of 22 new species, a large percentage of the currently accepted tarantula taxa of the country. It is believed that his travels took place in the late 1970s while he was a graduate student. A native Costa Rican, he likely traveled the country by bus, working the roadsides outside villages. It was our team's goal to follow Valerio's 30-year-old path visiting his species type localities as well as other historical sites. Led by renowned tarantula researcher and arachno historian Andrew Smith, our party transversed and transected Costa Rica in search of big hairy spiders and much more. My two other mates were brothers Paul and Mark Carpenter. I was the sole American. Our mission was to track the historic and Costa Rican tarantulas and capture original photographs of both the spiders and their habitat. We collected data on distribution and burrow construction and recorded temperature and humidity both inside and outside of burrows. Where possible, we viewed the inside of burrow tunnels using an endoscope. GPS coordinates were recorded for each location. We did not collect any specimens save for temporary containment until better photographic conditions prevailed. All specimens were released after carefully reconstructing their original homes. Since our trip, it has become apparent that some of Valerio's identifications are suspect and current researchers will likely correct some of his work. However, there is no doubt that he contributed greatly to our knowledge of the Costa Rican tarantula fauna, and we were fortunate to follow his footsteps and locate about a dozen different types of tarantula spiders. We were also very fortunate to experience the beautiful country and people of Costa Rica.
excited. Yeah. Here Andrew digs alongside the roadside embankment burrow using an ice axe, a technique he learned from the late Martin Filmer. In this case the work was for naught, as during the dig I tickled out our spider using a long thin twig. And we can put her back into her little home. Yep, we dug around it, but we're able to tickle her out, so her home is intact. She only tickled out because basically the amount of noise, etc., on the side there. Well, when she first started grabbing the stick, she was pretty deep in there. Yeah. She held on pretty tightly once when I gave her a little tug, and right. with all the racket going on behind her, she was ready to. Run for the hills. Alright, stick out. And okay, my darling. In you go. There you go. Come on. In. Okay. Right. Moment in time, Paul. Michael. <laughs> Paul. Let's say he's the traveling. <laughs> A moment in time. There you are. You touch the face of arachnology, <laughs> the adventure, and that's what it's all about. Right, in the can, day in the bag, and that's what it's all about. Right, let's fill in the uh, hole we've made at the side here. Right, so we've got no damage behind, and uh, we will thank the madam kindly. Right, okay, we'll get some beautiful stock shots of these lovely burrows that look like burrows. And she's up in that hole. She is gorgeous. Monster. So, gentlemen, let's get some habitat shots done. And we like to feel less. Just be careful of the road while you're working. Huh? Yeah. And it's the lorry, because here's the The bright side, huh? Let's get the... This is the hole where the big spider is. Yeah, that one up there, yeah. You gonna do that first one, Paul? Uh, can you hold that for me, mate? I just want to get this uh, skin out. Before I do the hole, I like, I like photograph it. I'm not touching it, I'm getting the skin out. Here we see Paul remove a molted skin from a burrow and examine it for the characteristic Carapace hornus Fairbothria hoffmanni, another species found in this cloud forest habitat. 
However, these burrows all contained Megathobema mesomalis, and we would have to wait five days before we located our first Hoffmanni to the west near Santa Elena. But if I can get the carapace, we'll see if it's got the horn. That's what I'm after. Where's the other burrow? Up there. There's no horn, Andy. Huh? No horn. Yeah. Where's your other burrow? There's loads of them, Andy. It depends which one you're on about. Is there a burrow here as well, Paul? There's loads, Andy. Loads. I've got another one here. Yeah, I know there's loads. Yeah. So we've got another big girl, possibly up on the side there. The gorgeous Megathobema mesomalis proved to be abundant in this montane village some 20 miles from the Monte Verde cloud forest, and what a spectacular sight it was. Note the silk drag line it is leaving behind as it moves along the embankment. That is a perfect pose right now. Molted specimen, that's for sure. Red's coming all the way down to the tarsus. Right. On the leg one and two. In she goes. Bye bye now. Go back into your home, beautiful girl. Excellent. Telling you what she thinks of you, Andy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, alright. You got something there? It wouldn't be the first time. Can you be trusted with all this data, Michael? This information. Yeah. Yeah. I can be trusted with your life. Life. One a day. Doing all right. Okay, let's take a look right and um, see if we get some photographs. Do you want me to do it? Yeah. Let's get some photographs if they were to go out. You never know; she may come out. Which way was the burrow bending and how far deep? Down and then back up. Down that way? No, it went down and then she's going back like that. So like that? Yeah. Straight ahead or again at an angle? Uh, ahead. This was the first year the team had used an endoscope to view inside of a tarantula's burrow lair. We were able to see our spiders in their homes, on occasion also seeing prey remains and even an egg sac. Since the Costa Rican trip, our team has outfitted itself with a superior model of this amazing research tool. Oh, wow. Yeah, good. Yeah. Mm. Excellent. That is like horror movie stuff. Is it? Yeah. You good enough to get a digital up against? No. Oh. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> I still think. I don't think it's our buffalosa, but I think it's... We're looking it ain't at our buffalosa, no. I'd say, though, we're looking at a different colour leg, feet. Those are almost like kind of... Am I looking right here? We look like kind of... Um, the tarsi apples have kind of a uh, rusty red little patch. We can... Actually, with this, I can follow her. Yeah. So if I drive her all the way down, and okay. see what That's happens, it goes. see how I mean, far it goes. I mean, we know that Sarkoperma parlor is in this area. The description is really poor. Basically, for all intents and purposes, it's a brown job of red cedar. What do you want the stick for? Put it in there. Yeah, it's all awesome. Give you a mucker. Okay. Got another one So cruel sometimes, Mark. But it doesn't count because I've just got they left it for me. <laughs> we both so, saw it. Michael, unfortunately, still we're not going to fire up those two Cubans. Oh yes, we are. <laughs> Doesn't count. This oh. is this one counts. Oh no, it's not. It's Ooh. not our bottle Sorry. Ready? Okay. We only get a Cuban cigar for. Yeah. Alba Pelosa. I'm sorry, guys. Sarah Capelma. is not worthy of a. Of a Cuban. We'll put it back once we dug it out anyway. Mine must be a first time. As you'll learn later, the spider in this burrow, which we then considered to be Sericopalma upala, may belong to another genus altogether. But no matter, I needed it to be Brachypalma alba pelosum before I would spark up Andy's promised Cuban cigar. Well, I'm hoping that we can now get her out yeah. with this, what we've got without doing any much more digging. So I can see what's going on. Uh, can you see the bar? There she is. Oh, lovely stuff. Okay. She's only just there. Great stuff. Uh, step back. I just got enough photographs. The bar is beautiful. Just, it's got the yeah, shape of it. Yeah, bring us the camera, bro. Right. That's the excellent. Yeah, so bring it down a little bit. She's not going to escape. Look at her bite, that oh, fucker. Excellent. Oh, dear. And now is uh, pop her into a box. We're going to repair the burrow and then pop her back into the burrow again as we've uh, completely finished our film work with her. So, here you go, sweetheart. Okay, here you go. <coughs> kind of what we've done there is just kind of done a repair to the uh, burrow. So, uh, in a few minutes' time, all right, uh, just patch up the edges here and we'll pop back down the hole again. Right, let's put the lady back. Kiss me up. Right. She's done her photo shoot. We are greatly appreciative. And, uh, right, darling, in you go. Oh, gone in seconds. Paul found this ultimate male of what is currently Lasiodora sesu, but probably is of the genus Crypsidromus, in the evening near our first base at La Quinta Serapiki. Pass the matches. It looks like it's time for a Cuban cigar. <laughs> What'd you find, boys? Some in the pan, gentlemen. Right. What'd you find, boys? Right. Apple Fuck Weird. Apple down at the out. down at the bottom of this broken off tree. You get it.
So we have spiders across here in burrows that we just discovered and now Mark's found this furry beast down this tree trunk. Okay, we've got a fascinating situation. Now, Paul Carpenter has come across right, um, a burrow over there by the banana, down by the roots. Now, what we've done is tickled it, and what's come up is another brown job, possibly another Cerecopelma, we don't know. Possibly even the same one that we found in the embankment earlier down the road. Now, then, as I walked across to him, we spotted another burrow. Now, this burrow is much bigger. We have absolutely no idea what's at the base of it. The spider, we're tickling it, it's taking the, the stick at the end, it's giving a little tug, but it's not actually coming to the surface, so we're going to have to dig this to actually find out what it is. But, this is the fascinating scenario, okay, uh, Mark Carpenter has uh, walked over and um, just had to glance down a, a basically a broken tree stump and uh, with his torch, and there is an apopolosum, Brachypelma, sitting down the bottom of the tube. Now, what we are saying now, of course, is, is this a brown job, or is this in reality another about population? We don't know. So, this is Santa Clara. This is the collection site, the type site of that spider. And um, obviously, we're now hoping we can actually pin down a colony, we can pin down other burrows. But this is an impressively big burrow. So, guys, we're going to navigate up and see what's at the bottom. Is it going to be another Cercoperma, or is it going to be Brachyperma and Populosum? We visited many of Lario's sites where he had described species of Cerecopelma. What we found there we attributed to this genus, but some of these identifications have since come into question. In discussions with Dr. Stuart Longhorn and also Ray Gabriel, we now know that some of these spiders are more likely to be members of the genera Stichoblastoris or Aphinopelma. Here we find Valerio Cerecopelma upala and have no reason to call it anything else but future work will be needed to sort out the taxonomy of some of our Costa Rican tarantulas. Yep, identical. Oh, how boring. Clear. But why? Well, I suppose the whole simmer, there isn't it? Go. Right. Right, um, okay, we've now uh, dug the burrow. Right, a uh, little sweat in the old brow. And um, she's Cercopelma. Now, it's exactly the same Cercopelma we found earlier right we're at the embankment so we're presuming right it's a father but to be honest, we don't know right and uh, you need to compare this material with uh, Valerio's type material but the reality is it is in the correct uh, again type locality so within this banana plantation that's been burnt off and that's essentially what it is it's a banana plantation that's been burnt off and um, it means it's cleared the ground so we can actually work the area and um, basically we've got in this corner, right, it's a Cerecopelma colony, and these are fascinating because you're actually looking at obligate burrows. We're looking at burrows going straight down in the ground. Now you'll notice the earlier one, the burrow was going to the embankment. So we automatically thought maybe we were looking at banking material, and as was our much earlier Cerecopelma that we found. But um, this material, right, we're looking at a burrow going directly into the ground. And since then we've actually discovered another burrow over the far side there, which again is a good deep burrow going into the ground. We've tickled that and we know that there's actually a Brachypelma abopolosum in the burrow over the other side of the field. Now the light is now beginning to foul, so what we're going to do is come back tomorrow morning and uh, give it a go with better light. And what we do then is excavate our uh, Brachypelma, which I won't forget is the actual key tight target spider uh, that we've actually been trying to seek for the last uh, day and a half. But nevertheless, right, this is a good catch, right, it's the other Cerecopelma that we expected in the, in the, in the area. And um, what we've dis discovered, of course, right, is this material isn't just embankment spiders, they're putting obligate burrows straight into the ground, which is a new find, new piece of data. And we're always after new piece of data. Right, now what we're going to do is pop it back into the burrow. Now we've obviously right, created a lot of damage there. So what we're going to do is actually repair the burrow. And we use banana leaf. Okay, and we're going to create a kind of wall. So she's now got a kind of chamber underneath the ground itself. And so when we pop her down the remaining burrow that's still there, um, she'll have a chamber which we can then fill in basically. And hopefully right, so we'll have no problem. So we're returning her back again right to the burrow. Now, what I'm doing now is... Lining. 
Okay, banana leaf, and then what I do is push down the earth. Putting in the hole on the side. All right, okay. So basically what we've done is repaired this section. Try to make it flush. Don't want it to flood, so let's do a stamping down. Right, okay, and what we're gonna do now is return her back to the burrow. Nice right, sweetheart, here you go. All right, there she's gone. Now, this is Mark Carpenter. Mark is the man who found uh, our first Brachypelma bopolosa. It's down, okay, the um, trunk there. Now what we're looking at here is obviously coconut tree. It's completely rotten. They've burnt off this whole section. And um, it's almost like it's poverty. You know, we've got whole sections cut off. A rotten stump, and down the rotten stump itself, is our spider. Right now, you've got something to put him in when he comes out. Uh, yeah, I've got another bag. Okay. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. Come on, son. Come on, son. Come on, son. Come on, son. Do we have a male? No, we do not have a male. Ooh. What a bummer. Um, she's been flooded out. Yep. Yeah, that's doing my what a beauty! That Freshly malted. That doesn't look anything like that. Ooh. She's getting the ants. Oh. Right, just take her around again. Yep. Just, just yeah. uh, she's, gonna, she's not going to stay there, Andy, because of the ants. Just Let's get her down on the, on the floor. Okay. Right, okay, we've got her out. Uh, what Paul Carpenter has done is tickled her. She's basically legged it up. At, it's not a male, it's turned out to be a female. And she's now on the side here. Now, we haven't seen this type of spider in the pet trade for years. 20 odd years ago, a British importer called Ian Wallace, right, probably the last time that you were allowed to actually bring material from Costa Rica, uh, Costa Rica for the trade, uh, shipped in this material. This is very different from the material that is floating around the European and American trades as Brachypelma right, above Lonesome, as you can see. It is breathtakingly beautiful. And look at those wonderful curly hairs. A very special spider. The following morning we returned to our Santa Clara albiplosum site for a photo session and I was lucky enough to find and film this Phenutria boliviensis with an egg sac in a field nearby. This is a highly venomous wandering spider. Bigger female, isn't it? Yeah. Right. The fascinating thing about this, of course, is that this is a mature female, but look, she hasn't yet shed her exoskeleton. Now, you remember the one we filmed earlier in the, the root stump, well, the, the, the coconut stump? Well, it was pristine. She'd just shed. This female hasn't done so, she's about to do so, which possibly indicates we're yet still a couple of weeks out of the males right appearing in large numbers. So in two or three weeks time we're gonna have males wandering across this site, but not yet. Right, we're back at the coconut stump again and what we're doing is returning her back to a stump. Um, here we go. Right. And it's up to her again to uh, obviously find refuge but at least here one presumes there's a relative barrow nearby. And oh I guess we are. 
Thank you. Welcome back to In Search of Costa Rican Tarantulas. In part one, our team worked out of two base camps, an eco-lodge near La Selva Biological Station in the Caribbean lowland tropical wet forest of northern Costa Rica, and later a simple traveler's motel in Upala in the dry forest and plains of the northwestern region. We were fortunate to locate a number of tarantula species, including Megaphibema mesomalis and Brachypalma albopolosum. This rainbow and incredible vista was enjoyed after we had settled into our third base camp at Hotel Capizuri in Cañas, which lies on the Pan American Highway in the Sabanas, or cowboy country, of the plains of Guanacaste province. Here we enjoy a cerveza on the patio of La Hacienda La Pacifica, a beautiful hotel where tarantula enthusiast Frances Murphy had stayed when she visited from England years before us. She had found Aphidopelma simani here, and it was one of our target species to begin the second half of our field trip. My mates are discussing how the fine accommodations of La Pacifica would exceed our budget, especially our potential bar and restaurant tabs. After enjoying our refreshments and a bit of relaxation, we moved on to find Hotel Capizuri, which would serve as our third base and would prove to be surrounded by the striped knee tarantula, Athenapelma simani. She's a freshly molted job. She's now look at those legs, they're almost yellowish. Yeah, what do you reckon, Michael? Yeah. Yeah. Is that what you got? A really deep chestnut brown with a yeah. almost not, uh, yellowish. And that's what I remember like right, years ago yeah, Ian Wallace shipping in, 20 odd years ago. Yeah. Now is that what you guys have got in the Petro in America? Well the stuff that's been captive bred for a while is stuff from again? like what Al McKee collected years ago when he came down here, but what's coming into the pet trade now is much a faded, Let's much more washed out, much less distinct stripes even after yeah. a molt material that's probably coming out of Guatemala or Honduras or wherever it is, Nicaragua. Yeah. yeah. Ersatz. It's a bit like the um Apopolosa. Not getting there any. Here we are at night. The female's removed the silk from her burrow and is at the top, waiting for any insect to come by. They didn't always have to wait long. Some evenings we caught locusts and other insects and released them near burrow mouths. Although we weren't too successful hand feeding the many tarantulas within walking distance of our hotel rooms, here one female is seen eating balls offering. We're now at La Pacifica. Uh, we've basically been working the uh, meadow behind the, the hotel and uh, up there we've found a number of burrows going, obligate, classical obligate burrows going down into the ground. Now what we've done then in the evening was we actually then came down and worked the road itself. And what we found a series of burrows in the embankment. This is the kind of classic burrow, obligate embankment burrow. It goes down about 14 inches but not, okay, straight down, you look at kind of horizontal and then tip it, tipping up slightly and the chamber at the end. Now there's the spider itself and what we're looking at here is classic Aphnopelma Somani. It is a breathtakingly beautiful spider and of course what we're looking at is the classic striating 
creamy striating lines on the legs. Very different from the spider that's floating around in the pet trade. In Europe this was shipped in about 20 odd years ago by Ian Wallace and I haven't really seen this material for a, a good decade. It's highly likely that um, after the Pelmas are on the market at the moment are coming from elsewhere other than Costa Rica. But this is the classic material that Valerio described and of course right is the specimen the, or the species, should I say, that is in the British Museum of Natural History that was collected by uh, seamen approximately 140 years ago. This spider is also particularly fascinating in the sense that it's one of the very early Theraphosis spiders joined the British Museum Natural History Collection. It was collected in the 1850s by um, Berthold Seaman, who was a germ of German extraction, working for the Royal Gardens Kew. And Berthold Seaman was the attached, right, as naturalist, to the survey ship HMS Harold. So this is one of the very first spiders brought into the British Museum Natural History Collection. Finished filming, we've done a whole load of photographic shots of the spider, the embankments, etc. So we're about to move on. So once again, Lo, before we do so, uh, the lady has uh, supplied all the film footage that we need, so we're now going to oh, right, excuse me, young madam, pop it back into the bar again. Right. There you go. Just want to go in. Particular bottom. There you go. Right. Job done. After a day and a half of working the plains and dry forests surrounding Cañas and our base near La Pacifica and Hotel Capizuri, we drove southeast into the mountains toward Monte Verde Cloud Forest. We came upon a coffee shop for a quick rest, and it was a fortuitous choice. First we discovered that it was a haven for the local birds, including some of the 50 species of hummingbirds or colibris that call Costa Rica home. And of course the coffee in Costa Rica is among the best in the world. But also, before we even pulled away from the shop, Paul discovered a burrow, and it would contain quite the prize. That's a violet saber wing. On the ledge. And what could you ask for? I'll use the lid to block up the hole if she comes out. Okay. All right. Both Paul and Andrew tried tickling out our spider, which we could see was the Horned Beauty Sferobothria Hoffmani but she was stubborn and we were reluctant to dig because of the proximity to homes in the coffee shop. She goes up as well. Mm. So maybe it wouldn't be worth looking below that, below the clay line. Well, we've seen the, you saw the foveal protuberance, so we're definitely looking at Hoffmani. Yeah. What we can do though, is note the site, push onto Monte Verde, and hope you never use a specimen turns up. So I could run away. That would be the best thing to do. Right. You know exactly where we are. Exactly. Come back, come come back, back on, on the way yeah. home. Well, on the way home we can come back. And if we have to dig it, it would be far dig better it. off digging it at 6 o'clock than yeah. it will be now. Less traffic. And we've done the stock shots in the daylight anyway. Yeah. So we can then do stock shots right on the side there. We know okay. it's off Marnie, so... It's not going to run away. We've got, we've got a perfect location. And uh, let's push on to Monte Verde. And plus the fact it may turn up an easier one yeah. up there. That's right. what I'm thinking. 
Just up the road, we found more Hoffmani. If only we could get a photograph of that. That is amazing. Should have retreated right back into the barrel when I, I tried. Have Don't a look. look. You can see her fangs in it, everything. Okay, what we're doing at the moment is uh, playing around with a new idea. We've been experimenting using an endoscope. Definitely so. And uh, what we're doing as well is putting a digital camera up against the end of the endoscope and photographing them. Now what's in the mind. end is fascinating. What we've got is a Hoffmani actually consuming a worm. And what Mark's noted, being an engineer of course, is that all of these burrows are in the friable earth above the clay line, which of course worms are moving through. So it could be that worms are actually quite an important part of the Hoffmani diet. Who knows? What do you see, Paul? You see mm, the, uh, the, first one. The, uh, too dark. the spider eating the worm. Oh yes, if you can narrow that down and bring that up, that's perfect. I haven't got one of the horns. Here we have a classic Hoffmani. Right, back here to the bar again with our Hoffmani. Now she's a fascinating spider, a German collector, 1850s, and described by Karsch, who was operating out of Berlin, one of the historical spiders, and that's what makes this spider fascinating. Uh, Valeria re-described it again 20 odd years ago, but this is, I must admit to you, the first one I've actually seen outside a spirit jar in the Berlin Museum collection. So this is a very, very special spider. Anyway, we're finished with her now. We've done the shots necessary, and uh, we're now going to pop it back into a bar and say goodbye to her. Right, in you go, my lovely. Right to you, bottom. Right there, you are. Excellent. We pushed on to Santa Elena, the gateway to the Monte Verde cloud forest. Just outside of town, we stumbled upon the world of insects. Uh, yeah, he's been getting to an angle. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've yeah. probably got this pair of fangs going like that. Above no, I'm going to do a slide. It's behind you. you. Half money, that's me, that's the money. You've got a mail here, Andy. Uh -huh. Ooh. Absolutely huge. You know. We decided to forgo the admission oh, yeah, price to tour the museum, yes. but we did enjoy the displays in the gift shop. Yeah. Large, but small. We saw numerous frogs and lizards, including this juvenile spiny-tailed iguana, throughout the trip and around Arcania space, but few snakes. We concentrated on finding tarantulas. You can imagine my joy when Paul found this lyre snake whilst responding to nature's call. I didn't share the fact that it was a rear-fanged venomous snake until after both he and Andrew had held it for photographs. Beautiful snake. 
This is only the second snake we've seen for the entire trip. We saw a little Samophis or something along those lines going across the street today. Some Paul just found this wall. About to have a last. Among the endless Afinopalma Simani burrows we found in our Capizuri backyard, Paul noticed one that was very different. It was the first of another spider we would find living sympatrically with the striped kneed Simani. At first we believed this spider to be Valerio's Brachypelma fossorium, but it may very well have been Afinopelma crinorufum. As this female was released after a photo session and not preserved for science, we will never be certain. As mentioned in this film's part one, our team visited Valerio's collection sites, the type localities of species he described, and we attributed the spiders to his names. That is, our field identifications were biased by Valerio's work and the sites visited. We would later visit Sarmiento, the type locality of his Afinopelma xanthrochromum, but another area where Simani was abundant. We found an ultimate male that has since been matched to Afinopelma crinorufum, so it very well may be that the second species we found living among the prevalent Afinopelma simani colonies, both near Cañas and Sarmiento, is indeed Afinopelma crinorufum. And you can see the wicked bad little fangs. All right, so uh, we'll treat her gingerly. Or treat him gingerly. It's a nice spider. It's got a beautiful kind of coppery bronze. Oh, Right, so uh, this one's a surprise. Now, um, we've been working this road all day. We've been in searching basically for Metropolitan Sabrata. And uh, really, the real hero of the day is Mark. Uh, we've had no success with Sabrata. Once again, we've found tons of Afnipoma Somali and a handful of uh, Barakalis, probably. But uh, the surprise, of course, is this one, Samotheus so Redunkus. Now, it seems uh, Mark and Paul were working up this area. Through the monkeys, and uh, Mark just happened to wander over here. Put a torch down the hole. The hole is around the side here, and uh, this beautiful lady was inside. We've took her out and popped her into a plastic tub for the time being, because obviously, right, she's going to move incredibly fast. So we can't actually film her here. If we do, she's going to be gone like grease lightning. So what we do is put in a, a film in a slightly safer spot, and then return her back to our hole tomorrow morning on the water. That's beautiful. Yeah, get in there, mate. Get in there. Good, that's taking some good ones with this. That's a lovely spider actually, mm. ain't it? Right, we're on a ridge above Palma Norte, f fairly nearby to a Mesoamerican uh, historical site at Baruca. And the spider that we're basically seeking in this area is obviously Afnopelma burica. Now, we've basically excavated a a decent burrow in an embankment and produce this young lady. She is in appearance the classic Afnopelma spider 
and uh, what we've got here is basically Valeria's description. We're talking chestnut, chestnut brown. Now, we've noticed right on the internet there's um, a few images that are of supposedly Athnopelma burica, and we've noticed that they've got a distinctly uh, blue pubescence on the chelicerae, front of the chelicerae. Now we don't see this at all with this spider and uh, as we found her with an egg sac, she's obviously not post uh, molt and she's not pre-molt. She's obviously halfway between the two. So we're looking at a distinct, distinct beautiful chestnut carapace and a much darker abdomen there as you can see. But uh, the proof of the pudding will be tomorrow, because tomorrow we're going to be working the planes around the classic site. Remember, we're above the site at the moment. So this could very well turn out to be something different. We don't know yet, until we actually pin down the classic Ephnopelmoburica site and we start uh, finding the site spider that we presume to be Ephnopelmoburica. But again, an attractive spider. Should pop a few seconds on here, so you can see. Right, you can see. Again. Now, so what we're looking at is wonderful deep chocolate abdomen, legs, touch of grey, of course, to the rest of the legs. But look at that carapace. If that's not chestnut, what is chestnut? That is a gorgeous chestnut. Spent a busy five minutes restoring and repairing the burrow again. So we're going to turn it back to a burrow. Touch a bottom, get a tan. And there she goes. Sadly, even amazing journeys must come to an end. Our final day with the fauna, flora, and people of Costa Rica was spent around San Vito, not far from the Panamanian border. We searched this coffee plantation for Metria Pelma, but were surprised to instead find a Sferobothria Hafmani, some 100 miles east of our others near Monteverde. Ray Gabriel has recently published Panama records of this species, so this information is confirmed. Our two weeks of Pura Vida had come to a close, and our Costa Rican travels were done, for now.